What's happening, folks? Thanks for joining me. Monkey Mike here, Monkey Wrenching. Let's talk about turbos, or at least this one, and the manifold and porting. As you can see, I've got this marked out. What this matches is this here. That's perfect. Absolutely perfect. So, mark that out with Sharpie. This matches up like that. I'll port this side just the same, and then I'll match everything up when I put it on. Why not? Let's mark it out right now. So, let's make sure we got our hole center. There we go. That'll do, pig. That'll do. Now, another thing I wanted to talk about is this side. This is actually the most important side. As you can see, all right in here, that's actually where this flap, that flap, that's where that's hitting. So when it sits in here like this, and it's actuating, we're having a discrepancy where that big old flap, I don't know if you can see, yeah, you can. So it's up top right there. You can see just that little oval right there. Just that little circle impression. If I can, there we go. That right there is all that's actually coming out. That's what that little hole's doing. And I'm gonna pour it as well. It's gonna be this side here. I'm not gonna go that much though. As you can see, I actually left some of it alone. More toward this bottom side here. Um, and I won't go all the way on the outside. I'll, I'll make a note of that right now. And then another thing that I noticed, the wheel is actually bigger than this size here. You can see a bit of an impression on the outside. We'll just take that little bit out. And, uh, the, these seem to match up pretty good, to be completely honest. The, the gasket actually is more restricted, so. And I'm not gonna port the head right now. That's just not something I care about. I just got done finished up doing the right side, as you can see. And uh, I had a couple issues that happened and it went spinning out of control and I actually had to hit the surge protector right there just to get it to turn off because I couldn't get it to stop to hit that there. It was vibrating so bad and it was just like and just trying to keep, you know, hold on to it so that thing didn't go flying off somewhere. So I'm like holding it away from my face trying to get down to unplug it. Anyways, we got a lot of material that came out right there and I actually kind of went and curved it in, gave it a bit of a rounded edge on the inside. So hopefully we have less issues with these two cylinders pushing their exhaust pressure into that area. Uh, I'm not really gonna mess with too much more. I'm gonna get that side there and I'll do kind of a similar thing where I just round that up in there, make it a little bit easier for the exhaust. That one's not so bad. It was these side, this side is what I was worried about so much. That side there. It took off a lot of material, and as you can see, I gave it kind of a smooth polish. And I'm gonna do a little bit better. I'll come in by hand with some sandpaper and smooth all that out. And we're all nice and lined up. Perfect. Get some more material out here, and then we'll be done. That's, that looks a little bit. Oh yeah. Getting that all polished up. It looked like this on the outside last time. Now it's all nice and smooth. Look at that. Look at that. Hopefully we don't have any uh, boost creep issues or lag issues or anything like that. Try to alleviate it as much as we can. Got that fully ported and opened up. Looking good. Not bad for a little $100 eBay turbo log. What you're seeing here is the 1.6 manifold, one turbo from Leroy, another turbo from Leroy. Though they seem like they're very similar, they're actually not. One of them is pretty modified, the other one is stock. 
So let's get into showing you which is which. Hopefully I can do this one-handed and holding it to actually be able to maneuver the camera better. One of the first things that we're going to notice is the wastegate port. This one is much larger. Let's pull out our calipers. 21.6. 22.5 by 21.6. This one here, 25 by 25. I Actually, I did that by hand. I didn't measure any of it. That's, that's pretty good. I didn't think I did that good of a circle. And just to give you an idea, the reason why I did that is as you can see here, there's discoloration where the flap on the wastegate actuator comes up and it hits it and it only seals just that tiny little bit but has all of this where it's still sitting, where it's actually smacking against it. Now, a lot of people would say, well, you want it to be smaller, that way it'll make a seal. Yes, correct. But if you notice, this is actually sealing up at the top. It's not sealing in the middle. And you can see the indentation there where it's been keeping it from, you know, using the whole entire port. So what I did on this one, I cleaned it out a little bit so it's smooth just so the air can flow a little bit better. I probably gave it a mild, and I mean mild, porting. Um, something else I did do is I opened up this portion right here. You can see there's no more bevel there. It's just a straight shot for the most part. I did leave a little bit of an angle. As you can see, it tapers slightly, but it's not quite as dramatic. And the reason why is, again, you can see the impression there that is actually from the exhaust gas hitting it and having to having to go around so i just alleviated that problem and it's okay because the exhaust gas is coming out of here for this here to be slightly bigger than this one we don't want it the other way around we want this bigger that way it doesn't hinder the flow coming out so as you can see here 55 9 or 5579, sorry, versus 54. So I opened up a millimeter. So overall, from end to end, you see I don't kind of diagonal there. 97.59, and this one here. Ninety-eight. 75, 70, you know, 98, three quarter. Um, but what matters most is that it's not going to hit the wall of this right here. I didn't take down the inside where this is actually going to measure. So the, this inner ring, as you can see here, it does still have a little bit of taper to it. And I wanted to leave some of the meat, even though I didn't need to, this is fairly thick, but we do have like that little wall right here. And I just didn't want to worry about it. So I took the taper down. And I guess I left that little bit of a hump right there. But for the most part, I took the taper out of this. This is completely smooth. This, I guess I left a little bit of a lip. Oh, well, I don't care that much. Um, and then I also put a little bit of a relief on the back there. So when this comes and it hits, it'll actually actuate down just a little bit more. Now, I wasn't going to take enough down where this itself would recess or hit. And you can actually see when I smack it like that. Let's see. There you go. You can see there's like a little slit. And this one has the same thing. You can see the impression there. And I don't believe the wastegate actuator really even moves it that far, but I want to give it the opportunity to. That way it can clear the path. Um, that's another thing. Let's let's touch on that as well. So um, I did open the back side on the other one. You can see how that's tapered quite a bit. Um, this is polished all the way through. Nice and shiny there. And uh, this guy. And again, I didn't take it all the way down, but 5623, 55. So, you know, about a millimeter and a half. Um, I didn't mess with the actual V-band part of it, but I just took that, you know, it was a really harsh lip, and you can actually hear there's like a lip that my nail can grab on, and you just, you don't hear that, because it's all nice and smooth. So, 
We did do that as well. That's just going to give it a bit more flow coming out of the backside. Really, this is to not to hinder anything at like high RPM and stuff like that. And then the wastegate actuator hole um, for the you know for the wastegate to come out of. I modified that actually quite a bit. Now let me situate these, and then, uh, I'll get some. Let me turn the light on the f camera here, and we'll talk about what's so different about these. As you can see, that's just exhaust gas cast. Now if you can't see it, I'll point it out to you. That guy right down in there. That's a huge lip. Look at that. It's just it's a huge lip. And when you come off to the side here, first off, you can see this port is nearly half the size of the gasket, right? These are the two types of gaskets that we have. You got this one here, which is quite thick, and it's a crush type. You can see the lip, it's raised right there. This one here is the same thing, just thinner. Okay, um, you can tell they're made out of different material. I believe they're both steel. I don't really care to check at the moment. This one almost feels like aluminum. Um, but this one here, yeah, this one definitely steel. As you can see here, it's almost completely gasket matched. Not quite on the sides, and not quite on the top. The bottom is almost perfect. That was just how it was. Even if I flip it over, it's going to do the same thing. Okay, and you know the, that this matches the holes. This is going to float around a little bit, which is annoying, but it does that on the threads. Uh, an easy way to solve that is a little bit of copper spray and uh, delicate when you put the housings on. Um, either way, as you can see, it also almost dead on matches that one. Uh, you can see it has a little bit of difference on the top, but still, I didn't take the top completely. I didn't really want to mess with it too much. It was more or less about widening, um, and this is why. See, look at that. There is a lot of flow that we're missing. So it's coming out of the header or the, you know, the exhaust manifold. And it's just kind of smacking the side walls. And I know that most air runs through the center, right? But that's that's not always true. We're, we're going to be cramming so much exhaust gas into this. It's going to use the whole volume of the port. So you can see a considerable difference. This has been opened up a lot. So 61, 68 versus 55, 53. And then port to port on the top. Oops. We're looking at 45 and a half versus 44 and a half. Yep, 45.8. So as I said, the top and the bottom didn't need opened up very much at all. It was mostly just the sides. And another thing you, I did, as you can see, I ported the crap out of it. So I just cleaned it up and I basically gave it smooth walls all the way down. So there really isn't any obstruction. There's a very small taper. And again, the reason why is because, you know, it's it's only so thick and I really wasn't trying to push figuring out how thick I, you know how far I could go so that's all smoothed out about the best I could get it's pretty bad cast um, another thing you can see down inside there maybe that lip I mentioned earlier look at that right here I'll take a picture and then uh, we'll compare them side by side so yeah as you can see, it's just been ported out a great deal to allow more gas to flow through, have less hindrance at the top end. We're going to have less issue getting the uh, wastegate to actually function properly. As you can see there, I did not quite a bit of that down as well. Now I get it that part of this design right here is so that as it flows through, when it needs to hit the wastegate, it can just go right over there. The air is going to take the path of least resistance, period. There is no reason for that. That's just, that's stupid. This has more than enough, as you see. It's got more than enough to hit that wall, go out a hole that's been enlarged nearly half over.
I just basically went through, opened that up, you know, opened up, uh, did I even touch in there? No, I did not touch inside the actual, the actual, uh, exhaust housing itself or the turbo seats. It leaves us to move on to the exhaust manifold itself. I did also port match the gasket to the exhaust manifold. So that's good there. Um, this side is a little bit bigger, which I'm not really too terribly stoked about. Usually you want the receiving side to be bigger and the exit to be a little bit smaller. So I may actually open this lip up a little bit, but I don't want to push it because I don't want to get too close. You know what I mean? So I'm not really concerned too terribly much. Um, it is a very minimal amount. This is 64 and this is 62. Um, side to side, so it's you know a millimeter shorter on either side, and then I believe the opening, the opening should be identical. Let's let's give it a check. What is that? Forty-eight. Forty-seven. So it's just slightly smaller. So I, I may, I may enlarge this just a tiny bit, tiny, tiny, tiny bit. Um, as you can see, I didn't fully go around where I traced out anyway. And again, that's because you, it's easier to take away metal, like right now, than it would be if I went, oh no, it's two ones too big, ones too small. Um, I didn't touch the sides of this really at all. I did come in here. I cleaned up, you know, the inside of it. So that's all smoothed out. Again, it's just a really bad cast. I mean, all that stuff was just pitted beyond belief. It was really, really bad. Um, let me just see where. Nice and shiny. Shiny and clean. I couldn't get it, like, super duper polished. As you can see, like, back in there. Let me see if I can raise that up. Let me see back in there. That was just a really hard spot to get. And I did use some pretty long tools. Um, and I got the best angles that I could possibly get. I probably spent about three, four hours doing all of it in total. Um, and I came in here a lot. You know, it's just that one little spot. You can see it's rough back there. It's not as bad as it looks on the camera. But... That's that. So, oh, oh yeah. And then the other thing that I did, as you can see how the, the wastegate actuators are sitting differently. So this one here is at an angle, right? You can see that that's how much that one got cut and modified. Is it, it almost sits flat. It doesn't obstruct the turbo at all, really. I think it's sitting on it just barely. Um, whereas this one here is just, you know, at a super dramatic angle. So, yeah, thanks for tuning in. This is how I modified my turbo housing to hopefully perform better. Uh, if not, we have the other one to compare it to. And uh, I think it's actually going to turn out real well. It matches up five times better than it did before all the other, you know, before I did this. I would assume that we were going to have boost creep no matter what. And with an internal wastegate, there's no other way to fix that. So, thanks for watching. Peace.